So, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, we will uh, try to discuss one or two uh, boards from the labor world. We will uh, try to go through the way we've learned it in the lecture. If you don't feel comfortable with this and you want to, to practice your way, I don't mind. But first of all, we will try to discuss together as colleagues in the labor world what you need to do in this case, then we will practice. To feel more comfortable, take it easy. Uh, we will act like if we are now in the labor room, what you need to do in this uh, case and who will do this and what actually will be done. If you feel uh, the way I told you is okay for you, you can please write in a paper beside you, SPAR and the five W's, not to forget any one of them during your practice. Is that okay? Is that fine? Okay. 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 Fine. It's a start. First of all, who wants to start? I need a volunteer. Can I go, Dr. Sarah? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Who's there? Salma. Okay, Dr. Salma. Dr. Salma, read the instructions, please, and tell me what, what is the situation now? Hello, I'm Dr. Salma, one of the candidates today. I'm ready to answer your question. Uh, first of all, Dr. Salma, the examiner yeah. will not give you any chance to say this sentence. This sentence is a waste of time. Just say, hello, how are you doing? He will start taking over. He will tell you after you read. Now you are in the reading time. So you will not meet the examiner now. After finishing okay. the reading time, you will see him. Once you read him, hello, he will say hello and he will take over. There is no time to waste and I'm one of the exam candidates and I'm ready for the discussion. Uh, this doesn't make any sense and you will not be penalized if you didn't say it and uh, you will not be, we will not take any more marks if you say it. So please forget about this sentence, please in the structured discussion, just say hello, that's all. Okay. Okay, now read, read the scenario and tell me what's the situation now. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, we, we didn't start it. You, you didn't even okay. uh, see the board. Okay. You didn't ask me to see the board. So I don't want you to start now. I just want to know what is the situation now. Yeah. That um, uh, my tax is today to um, hand over the labor work um, case according to the uh, priority. And I have with me that uh, 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 my colleague and the midwife also, uh, who are uh, expert uh, in IB line and issue to me, uh, and one a newly qualified midwife also. So according to their uh, uh, competency and patient safety, I'll um, delegate the uh, tax to the uh, my uh, staff. So the situation now, you arrived at the labor ward at 7.30 a.m. And the midwife, she was there at 7 a.m. So she was there 30 minutes before you. Uh, uh, on duty, there is an ST2, ST5 anesthetist, and five and eight band six midwives. So you have a senior midwife or coordinating midwife and another eight midwives, they are band six of different levels of competence. 
the consultant oh. is busy. The consultant is not there. Okay. So yeah. now again, you you are aware of the time, seven thirty in the morning. You are aware of the team, and you are aware where is your consultant, and you are aware of the competence of the team that you have. Is that clear? Yeah. This yeah. is a situation awareness. You have to put it in your mind during the reading the task. Now, in a paper beside you, Dr. Salma, just please write yeah. a spar and what, who, when, where, and how. And okay. So now this is the board. You will see, you will take the first two cases, Dr. Salma. Okay. Beforehand, can I ask you one question? That what yes. is written, that what is written, they, they, are, uh, they don't like to mention. So do you think that it is written the uh, band uh, six and seven midwife and uh, what Dr. time? Dr. 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 Salma, I didn't, I didn't say uh, oh. till this. I'm telling, I'm asking you, I didn't show you the board. Now you will start your exam. Hello, hello, that's all. No, no, not this one, the previous one, which the I you show me. Do you think that I have to mention all of these things that's no, SD1, I SD2? I didn't say, I didn't say mention this. I didn't say, I did say mention it. I'm just mm -hmm. asking you if you are aware of your situation or no, because based yeah. on your awareness, you will put the plan. Now yes. you will not tell me as the previous time uh, I I will send the ST to you, ST one you don't have ST one mm. here okay yeah. so this is yeah. for yourself this is for right. organizing your mind during the reading time you will not say right. any of these things that we mentioned before here, right thank you here you will start yes yes okay hello hello can you see the uh, board yes. So, so what, what I'm expecting from you, that you organize the workload in the labor board. Uh, to be more specific, I need you to tell me uh, what actually will be done, who will do this, and when it will be done. Okay? Yeah. Go on. So my first case is that uh, it is patient is 38 weeks and she's uh, unstable labor uh, and she's early labor, head is high and she's para five. So I need more information to uh, manage the patient safely. Uh, so uh, I'll ask that, um, uh, how is the latest PV finding? And uh, also I'll ask the, uh, about the pay and she, uh, I'll ask about the CTG also, and uh, uh, to evaluate the patient uh, uh, after that, after uh, uh, taking the information. So the CTG is normal. Uh, this patient has rupture of membrane since two hours ago. Uh, she was examined four hours earlier. She was 7 cm, and uh, now she's 8 cm. Mm -hmm. So first of all, at, uh, as head is high, I'll be uh, aware about that there is a risk of cord prolapse. So um, I'll ensure that if it is that uh, she uh, she is in pain, so I'll see the CTG that there is a uh, contraction is uh, it is uh, less or more. So according to this, I may um, offer for. Uh, uh, pain relief and the uh, epidural also, if needed. Otherwise, uh, I'll tell the midwife to uh, continue the uh, observation and follow the partogram. If there is any concern, to inform me. And this is the uh, semi-urgent case now, and uh, a midwife can see. My next question is that she is uh, referred from the uh, midwifery uni. Yeah, midwifery unit uh, for uh, insertion of epidural. And she's para to uh, 41 weeks. Uh, there is no significant medical and surgical history. So uh, first of all, I need more information for this patient that she has uh, 
uh, pain now and is it a, a moderate pain or mild pain and then um, uh, she uh, she took any uh, synthesinone and uh, i'll see her ctg also this so after this the CT, ctg is normal she is getting okay. three contraction each 10 minutes as a cervix was 6 cm four hours back and they are examining her now yeah so what is the uh, finding now examination uh, finding it's still no no uh, no data okay so um, uh, i uh, according to her pain and uh, and after seeing the ctg uh, uh, that, sorry after uh, finish the pb um, uh, parvizina examination then i'll uh, tell the anesthetist to evaluate the patient for epidural and if possible to start the syntocin if needed uh, if there is a uh, uh, contraction is not uh, enough and then um, I'll tell the midwife to follow the parto, uh, partogram and uh, continue her observation. And if there is a, uh, any concern to inform me, and this is a semi-urgent case, so uh, midwife can see this patient. Uh, Dr. Salma, you spent four minutes and almost 46 seconds in, uh, in the first two cases. So you, you almost finished the half of your time in the first two cases. So you should be more specific. You should mm -hmm. go to the point. You are wasting a lot of time. I'm sure that so many things to be done in each case, but what are the needed points in each case of these? The first case, again, if you want to say, this is a multibara 38 weeks, with high head in early labor. No, no significant medical or surgical history. I need to know what's her last BV finding, the partogram, the CTG regarding the fetal heart and the contractions. The examiner here will uh, tell you that this patient uh, was examined or the examination is running now and the CTG is showing three contractions in 10 minutes. Any, um, any data about the finding is still no. So according to the BV finding, I will see if the membranes is still intact and the contractions are efficient, I will examine here after four hours. If no, I may need to do ARM control to avoid cord prolapse. The second case, transferred from the midwifery lead unit for insertion of epidural at 41 weeks and she's bara two, no previous history of medical or surgical problems. So this case, again, I need to know what's the cervical dilatation, what's the condition of the membrane, what is the CTG, and how is hair progress if labored in the partogram. So he will answer you that the patient now ruptured the membrane. The cervix is uh, eight centimeters and it was seven centimeters back. The condition of the membrane, the membrane's rupture two hours ago. So it means this patient was dilated one cm in two hours, which is accepted. So this lady is again same urgent case. You will send here the anesthetist to assess her with a one of the midwives and then to assess the frequency of contractions. If she's progressing well, this patient will be examined again after two hours after rupture of membrane. She will be examined after two hours. And after two hours, you will assess for the need for oxytocin. Not now. Now I finished in one minute, 50 seconds, the two cases. And almost half half the time you said. Yeah. Okay. So please, Dr. Salma, I know uh, you studied well, you know all the information, but you don't need to tell all the information in uh, the same patient. If you keep yeah. if you keep telling everything you know about the patient, it means you will waste the time in the first two patients as you did now. Simply, yeah. simply, Dr. Salma, if you have one patient, she's bar five and the head is high and unstable high. What do you need to know about this case? Yeah, so first of all, I, I, I need to know the recent uh, uh, that PP finding and then uh, her contraction. And 
the uh, she rupture membrane or not and then ctg to see her pain and uh, to see her contraction and the fetal well being okay what else this is a point here you have to add in the risk what else you need to know about this case yes because uh, head is high yes. so I need to be aware of that. Uh, uh, if she is rupture of membrane, uh, the, she may go for cord prolapse. So I have to do the cord uh, control cord traction, control cord uh, uh, ERM. What else in this case? What else you need to know about this case? And also, I because it is unstable lie, so uh, I I have to make sure that it is. Uh, head is engaged, and then uh, after that, if she is, um, she need uh, for syntocinone to start. You need here, a... you need here the ultrasound for the amount of lycor and for the estimated fetal weight, and you need during the BV examination to know if there is any evidence of cephalopelvic disproportion or no. These are the two points which are important in this case. These are the okay. added points in this case. Yes. Think, think about it easily. You are in the labor world. You need to know about this patient. The most important information, the estimated, maybe this is a macrosomic baby. Maybe the amount of lycor is more. So you need mm -hmm. to know the ultrasound also, and you need to do during the BV if there is any evidence of CBD. Mm -hmm. This to be added in this case. Okay, this is very important in this case. And pelvis is adequate or not? I can yes, yes, of course, she, pelvis is adequate because she passed the five uh, babies before. Now, it is, uh, right. if it is a problem, it will be a problem in the baby, not in the mother. Okay? Yes. Yeah. The yeah. second case, what are the additional points you, um, you want to add in this case? You already added it. The anesthetist has to go and evaluate here for epidural. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, next two rooms. Who will take the next two rooms? Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Who will take the next two rooms? Sir, can I? Your name, please. Sir, Dr. Falak. Dr. Falak. Okay. Dr. Falak, go on. So the next room is room number three that has been closed because of infection. So I would like to check what sort of infection was it. And I would ask the uh, coordinating midwife to get it cleaned as soon as possible so that we can shift another patient to this room. Okay. And my next patient is room number four. She's 29 years old, primary gravid at 36 weeks with antepartum hemorrhage. In order to safely manage this patient, I need some more information about her. I would like to know her placenta localization on her ultrasound scan and uh, her observations, including her blood pressure, pulse temperature, respiratory rate, and oxygen saturation, and the amount of bleeding that she is having, and her parabdominal and pervaginal examination findings. Okay, she uh, she has bright bleeding, soaping a bit after intercourse. Okay, and her placenta localization? So, not yet. Okay, so uh, I will, uh, if she has significant bleeding, I will label this as an obstetric emergency. I will be calling for help involving the senior midwife, the obstetrician, anesthetist, pediatrician, and a scribe also to uh, document all the events. And then we will also be involving the blood bank to arrange blood products. And uh, uh, I will be assessing her, performing a parabdominal and vaginal examination uh, to check if this is a case of abruption. I will be uh, having a feel of her abdomen, if it is stony, hard or not, and the amount of uh, the uterine contractions that she's having. Then we will be attaching a cardiotocograph to assess for the status of the fetus. And if she is uh, in, uh, indeed in an obstetric emergency, then we will be proceeding for an emergency cesarean section. Or if we can deliver her vaginally safely, we will be planning the safe vaginal delivery for her. Now the ultrasound done showing that the placenta is upper and high. OK. OK, so in that case, uh, my next diagnosis would be uh, placental abruption. So I would again like to check her observations, her uh, fetal status of the fetus, um, 
on her cardiotocography and checking her pervaginal uh, examinations if she's dilated or if she's in labor or not. So can you provide me with those findings? No findings. Okay, so this is an obstetric emergency and this is an urgent case. So I myself will be managing this patient and I will also involve the anesthetist and my consultant obstetrician. Okay. Uh, two minutes, which is good in this case because this is the main case in the scenario. Uh, first, mm -hmm. let's go to room three. You said that you will ask the uh, midwife or coordinate midwife to clean and uh, to call another lady. This room is closed because of infection. It's closed. It is not empty. This room is closed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you said you, you said right. You need to know what kind of infection is there and if the infection protocol measures are followed or no. And that's all in this room. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. This is this is not an empty room. This room is closed because some sort of infection. So it will not be opened according to your order. It will be according to the infection control. Okay. Okay. So and I need to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, okay. don't, you don't, don't need uh, to mention all the details. Uh, uh, I need to know about the uh, type of infection and if the infection mm -hmm. protocol is followed or no. The second room is okay. ABH. Uh, you almost said everything, but Please be uh, systematic. You said first the ultrasound, then you started to ask about the amount of bleeding. The first thing to come in your mind in this case is the severity of bleeding. And you, you didn't catch the point. It was bright bleeding, souping the bed after intercourse. So after intercourse, what is the possibility? It can be local cause. Yes, it can be local cause. So you didn't mention anything about the local cause. And you said that you will examine the patient PV. PV examination is not allowed in a patient before, before it's the central. Central localization. So after you can say speculum examination to exclude any local cause of bleeding after the mm -hmm. ultrasound, it mentioning that the placenta is over, you can do PV to see if the patient is in labor or no. This is right, uh, this is an urgent case, as you said, uh, urgent case, and it may affect the. There is someone is opening his mind. His mic, please. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so. In this case, you will follow the communication, as you said, ask for help, then resuscitation ABC, then investigation, mm -hmm. then treatment. The treatment in, in this case, what's your recommendation if the placenta is high and the patient, there is no contractions by the CTG? So this case will be? This, this is an obstetric emergency. Yes, and so what you will do? So if the patient is hemodynamically unstable and if she is indeed uh, having significant bleeding in that case and she is not in labor in that case, we might need to proceed for an emergency cesarean section for her. Perfect. If not, now bleeding, there is no bleeding and she is stable. In that case, we can manage her conservatively. We can exactly. uh, ass assess her seat. Exactly. So I give two options, Dr. Falak. So after resuscitation, after investigation, after ensuring that the patient is stable, we uh, can keep her under expectant management, or you will do emergency cesarean section if the patient is still severely bleeding and this is compromising her life, okay? So don't give a straight, straight answer, please. Always in the structured discussion, say it depends. Don't go for a straight answer, okay? Hello? Hello? Yes, Dr. Sorun. Uh, I'm, uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. So uh, my question is that, you know, the uh, if there is bleeding is stopped later on, so that means uh, it, at the time it is not emergency, isn't it? So do you think we will tell first that it is emergency or later on? No. You said already, Dr. Salma, that the, this patient is urgent. There is bleeding, bright bleeding, sobbing. It means severe bleeding now. So later, the degree of urgency will drop according to your management or it may still the same. 
but this is an urgent case. Now it is an urgent case after all the information I gave to you. Pride bleeding, sobbing is a bit, it means there is severe bleeding yeah. there. So this is an urgent case. And this case, you will go yourself or you will call your consultant if he finished or another consultant to come and help, okay? No, no, I didn't mean that. I mean that when you told that heavy bleeding, at the time I will explain that it is emergency or from beginning no, uh, no, to no. see the APH I'll tell. This is my question. This is uh, this is an, uh, 36 weeks prime gravida with APH. First, I mm -hmm. need to know about the amount of bleeding, the severity of bleeding. It may, yeah. ABH, ABH may be only spotting, right? Yeah. If it is a spotting, yeah. it will be the urgent, the urgent case? No, no, that's right, so, yeah. So you need to ask first, Dr. Salma. If you, yes. if you did not ask, yeah. uh, this is a failure point, okay? Yeah. So don't, yeah. don't build your plan without proper information. Yeah. Okay, next two cases, yeah, please. Thank you. Room five and room six, welcome. Room five and room six, who's, who's the volunteer? Who will take room five and room six? Huh. Room five and room six. Can I, doctor? Okay, name please. Antasar. Uh, doctor Ansar. For the doctor Ansar. Yes, sir. Um, this is a, a multi para in labor for a trial of uh, renal birth after cesarean section. She is para four plus one, 39 weeks. She is 30 years old. And uh, she is coming in labor. She is coming in labor. And um, <clears throat> actually her uh, her antenatal care was normal or uneventful. And her cesarean section was in the second stage, secondary to fetal distress. So uh, as regarding the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, the assessment of the patient, is there is any information about the the assessment of the patient, sir, or it is running or? You should ask specifically, Dr. Ansar. Yeah, I want to know about her, uh, she is in which, uh, uh, she, the cervix is dilated for how much now? She and membrane examined, intact or not? She was yeah. examined 30 minutes back and the cervix was 4 cm and the membrane is intact. Yeah, and what about the contractions? CTG is normal. Contractions, three contractions yeah. in 10 minutes. And the head minus one by examination. Yeah. So uh, so it seems that uh, everything is okay uh, is, is okay uh, during labor. So either uh, either I will uh, I will uh, examine her again after uh, three and a half hours while the CTG is present and uh, take a look on it uh, every now and then. And uh, also I will discuss with the patient the method of uh, uh, the uh, pain relief. If she wants to have an epidural or uh, she prefer another uh, way of pain relief. The contractions here is three in 10 minutes. So uh, uh, if, if it is the same after three and a half hours from the last examination, I will do a rupture of membrane and, uh, uh, and lift her and examine her again after uh, two hours. So this is a semi-urgent case and I will send for her, uh, I will, yeah, I will send for her uh, the, uh, one of the midwives. Unmute yourself, Tanya, Dr. Ansar Asmati. Yes, sir. So, okay. Dr. Ansar. I will send one of the midwives who could examine the patient okay. and uh, could uh, uh, explain the, uh, the CTG. Okay, I'll join the join. Yeah. And to come again to me after three and a half hours uh, to, say, to tell me about the progress of the labor of the patient. Uh, you spent much time in this case much, much more than needed, Dr. Anso. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you spent too much time in the situation and the background. The situation and background, simply 30 years old, multi -bara, in a trial of VBAC uh, with, uh, with normal antenatal care. That's enough. That's enough. 
Okay. Okay. But you, you spend yeah. too much time, almost 30 seconds in the situation and the background. Then in the assessment, you, you don't ask him if there is any data. What, what kind of data you, uh, you, you know? The kind of data uh, you should ask yeah, specifically. I, uh, and we, yes. we agreed before, what kind of data you want? As regarding the history of the patient, uh, I, I want to know about the cesarean section and whether it uh, passed uneventfully uh, uh, or if your patient received blood. In the labor ward. Now, what do what you want to know about this patient now? The patient is consenting for a trial of VBAC or not? And she is, uh, and whether she has any reservation for blood transfusion, against blood transfusion, because are uh, you going to send, uh, uh, are you going to do group and save? And... Uh, uh, What's more important as I told you, in the labor ward? In the labor ward, yes. Huh. What else? The examination and the CTG? Yeah. Yes, yes exactly. sir. Okay. I, I, uh, as I told you, sir, I want to know more about the examination of the patient in which state, in which uh, the cervix is uh, dilated, how much in brain intact or not, yes. and the CTG is normal or not, and yes. the uh, the frequency of contractions every ten minutes. Yeah. Exactly. Here you should mention it specifically. You need to know what the cervical dilatation, the CTG. Don't ask uh, any data. Any data later after you mention all what you need. Ask him now if there is any data about this. I will still, I will now start giving you the answers and you will build your plan depending on this. What's important here? What is the additional risk in this case? And what else you need to know about this patient from examination? Multivirus and VBAC. What is the risk here? Yeah. Yeah, the risk of rupture uterus, of so course. So how you exclude the, uh, the possibility of rupture uterus now? Uh, the CTG is normal, and this is the first uh, the first thing. If the, the, the fetal heart sound is normal, okay. uh, and uh, no bradycardia, and no, uh, also the patient is, uh, she didn't feel any pain in the scar, for example, exactly. or she is. And what and, is? Um, also, the station of the head also give me a, a clue also if, the, if the, there is contraction and the head is down or engaged in the pelvis. Exactly. exactly. Okay. And you can, we can no also... No bleeding. Add, yes. Yeah. The, if, if there is any bleeding or uh, the color of the urine. Okay? Yes. Yeah. That's, because that's rupture all, can lead to hematuri. Yeah. It, exactly. That's all what you need to ask in, in this case. So simply... This is a multivirus case at 39 weeks in a trial of VBAC, normal antenatal care. What I need to know about this case, I need to know about her cervical dilatation, her progressive labor on the vertogram, the CTG regarding the contraction and the fetal heart. And I need to know if there is any scar tenderness, if there is any bleeding, if there is any abnormal color of the urine. Now, 20 seconds in all what I have mentioned now. He will start answering you now, the CTG is normal. The cervix is 4 cm dilated since 30 minutes. The patient is spontaneous labor and the head minus one, and there is no bleeding. So at this point, uh, that's fine. At the current point, this is a semi-urgent case. I will send one of the midwives, the senior midwife, or the ST2 to evaluate the case and to give me information. And this case need to be examined again after three and a half an hours. And according to the progressive labor, we'll decide what to do. Less than one minute in this case. Yeah, yes, I, yes, I'm sir. sure. I'm sure you need to ask about if she agreed for blood transfusion, if there is consent, if there is, but not in this station, not in the labor world. You can ask about it in a, a different structure discussion. What's needed? What the, what should be included in the consent of cesarean section? The consent itself is a station, is a full station. So you cannot mention yeah. all this here. And of course, it is 7:30 and you are receiving uh, the handover from a previous group who ensured all this information, right? Yeah. So you, you don't need to mention everything in the case. Th this is a point. I, I'm sure that all of you know what everything about the case, everything about each scenario, but everything cannot be said here. You should say what's important, what's important in the assessment and what's your recommendation. So this care, this case currently, 
This is a semi-urgent case, but nothing need to be uh, done now. Examined 30 minutes back, so she will be examined again after three and a half hours, and we'll see the hair progressive labor, unless there is any abnormality in the CTG, you will intervene at that time. Okay, so the next yeah. room, next room, what you will do in the next room? Yeah, this is for cleaning, the next room for cleaning. So uh, I want to know when they finish cleaning and because this means that I have a, a, a room empty. So any one of the coming cases, is uh, there is a place for the uh, available. Try to make a concise sentence, Dr. Ansar. It's just take five seconds and tell me a sentence, no more than five seconds. Okay, I want to ask uh, when did they finish cleaning? Because in order to uh, uh, to know when I can uh, uh, put a patient, one of the coming patient or waiting patient to put it in the room. 15 seconds, again, <laughs> again, five seconds, okay. again, one sentence and five seconds in the current side. Yeah, uh, room six is for cleaning, so I want to know when they will finish it in order to put one of the uh, of the uh, uh, waiting uh, patients. Ten seconds. So for see, see, <laughs> just, just see All right. the, the next room after cleaning. I will ask the coordinator midwife to bring a one of the waiting cases. That's all. Okay. Okay. The, no one will tell you when he is going to finish cleaning. I will not finish okay. today. Okay. Just. Or <laughs> simply, simply say, uh, after cleaning, I will ask the coordinating midwife to admit one of the waiting cases. That's all. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, so, some, yes. People, some people, they, they will pass without saying anything, but you are here, the team leader, you should have a control over everything. You, you know that there is uh, one room is clean, so fin finishing cleaning and call one of the waiting cases to come in. Okay. Okay, doctor. Yeah, okay. thank next, you. Next two rooms. Next two rooms. Room seven and room thank eight. Thank you, doctor. You are welcome, Dr. Ansar. Next two rooms. Uh, can I do uh, room seven and eight, first of all? Yes, you can. Name, please. Uh, I am Adila. No, Dr. Adila. Okay, thank you. Uh, so this is the 40 weeks, uh, prime gravida. She's 16 years old. Uh, in a spontaneous labor, no significant medical or surgical history. This patient is a high risk patient because she is a teenager. I would like to review her notes, antenatal note, and to see her last scan and to see the estimated fetal weight. Because this patient uh, at high risk of um, uh, delivered by um, an instrumental delivery, uh, although by cesarean section. All normal. Sorry? All normal, all, all. Uh... All normal, okay. So um, I will monitor um, uh, what is her uh, BV now? No data. Okay, so this patient, um, uh, I will examine this patient by myself, see her um, uh, do BV, and I will review her partogram and um, we will monitor this patient at any risk uh, if she uh, she might need an operative vaginal delivery or cesarean section. Also, I would like to um, um, ask this patient about if she has any support after delivery or not. So we can arrange this with the midwife or the social service. Okay. One, one minute, 30 seconds. This is too much in, in this case. Okay. Uh, uh, why you will go yourself to this case? Is it urgent? It is not urgent, but it's higher risk patient. So I would like to see by myself at what stage she is in labor. If you say this means you are undermining your colleagues, they can uh, you can ask them about the data and they will tell you. Mm -hmm. Keep okay. yourself, keep yourself to the room in which there will be a possibility of maternal mortality. If there is maternal compromise, you will go. Okay. If there is maternal compromise, I will go myself and call uh, for help, my consultant and my colleagues. This is the only room you will go yourself. That's why uh, it was accepted to go to room four. But in this room, there is nothing that will compromise the maternal condition. So you can send one of the midwives 
What is the mean? What is the mean risk factor in this case? You already mentioned it. That's a teenage pregnancy. So yes. all what's needed in this case is a support. Support yes. during during delivery, and you will ask if he will tell you everything is normal. So I, if the CTG is normal regarding the contractions and the fetal heart and the BV findings are normal and the progressive labor is okay, this case, I need to know what when she was examined for the last time. And then after the four hours from the last examination, I will reassess her again. This is a semi-urgent case. I will send one of the midwives to see her and give me the information. Okay? Yes. Okay. No, no need to go yourself. No need okay. to to waste all this time in a case he's telling you it's normal. All what's needed in this case is a point about support because she's a teenage pregnancy. Okay? Yes. Next room, Dr. Adil. Uh, so in uh, room number eight, empty room, I will, uh, I will ask the uh, coordinated midwife to admit one of the, uh, the patient in the waiting list. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Next two rooms. Next two rooms. Huh. Dr. Hannah or Dr. Ahmed. Dr. Abtihak. Dr. Fawziya. Dr. Hamida. Dr. Hiba. Anyone? Okay, anyone? Can I do? Yes. Can I do? Sure. That's yes, sure. Yes. sure. Hmm. Okay. So my next patient is she's a uh, para one, 20 weeks, and uh, for termination of the pregnancy due to uh, Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. So I'll make sure that uh, uh, it is started the ter termination or not. And if not started to uh, uh, start later on after uh, we'll uh, see the emergency case and uh, we'll uh, evaluate her. Let started her and already and she patient. received the one dose of mifibrostone and one dose of mesoprostone. Okay, so uh, when it is started, I'll ask. Uh, now she's 24 hours since start. Okay, so uh, uh, we'll see that she need for another uh, uh, mesoprostone or not, how much bleeding and uh, os is open or not. And then uh, no we, contractions uh, and no bleeding. And uh, us is open. No. So we'll uh, we'll take decision to, for another uh, uh, another tablet if patient is agree. Otherwise, we can give her rest. And for the bereavement counseling, we'll ask that she had or not. If not, then we'll arrange for that. Again, Dr. Salmat, I know you know all the information in this case, as you said at the beginning, what you need to know to ask about if she started termination or no. Yes, she started and received the mifibrostone and the mesoprostol since when? Almost 24 hours. So you will give uh, advice to give the second dose of, me of mesoprostol and support for the lady. That's all. That's all. And move to the next case. Yeah. Okay. Next case. Okay, sir. Next case is that she is uh, post cesarean section uh, since uh, four hours. So she's in recovery room. So I'll um, ask the midwife uh, about the vital sign and uh, she's, uh, her uterus is contacted and she's bleeding uh, and uh, urine output, everything is fine. Everything yeah. is fine. So if everything is fine, so I'll tell the midwife to continue the observation and uh, if there is anything to uh, inform me. And this okay. is a, a routine case. Okay. Next two rooms. Next room, this is- uh, no, no one uh, else is interested to, to go? We can give a chance for someone else? Huh? No one? Dr. Alubna? Dr. Mona, Dr. Neshwa, Dr. Wafa. Hmm. Anyone is interested to go? Okay, Dr. Salma, 
continue. Yeah. So this is a high dependency unit and empty. So I'll tell the midwife if there is an emergency arise, so they can shift this uh, uh, the patient here. And next question is a media ferry lead unit also. It is empty. Uh, so if there is any, uh, there is a patient waiting also, they can shift the patient here if there is a other uh, room is not available. Okay, next, next two. Next two. Yeah. Next is that um, she's multi-paras uh, woman and 30, 39 weeks and is spontaneous labor for uh, full birth. And she's in middle of reality unit. So I'll ask that how many centimeters she is, how is her pain and how is the CTG? Everything is normal. So if it is everything normal, so this is semi-urgent case, I'll tell the midwife to continue had, uh, that, uh, Dr. Asalma, I'm sorry, but I get uh, a call now from uh, from room one. They are telling that her membrane is ruptured and there is a cord prolapse now. Yeah, so this patient, this patient or other patient? Room one. Sorry. Oh, okay. So, uh, yes, I, so this is the, uh, I'll hand over the case with my colleague and I'll go to see the, uh, the cord prolapse patient because that is emergency, uh, obstetric emergency. So I'll call for help and then I'll uh, inform my consultant and uh, the theater team also. And I'll evaluate the patient that uh, how many centimeters she is. And I'll, pu uh, I'll put her in uh, Nietzsche's position I'll put her IV uh, cannula, uh, two white bull cannula, and also the blood uh, test, uh, group and shape and cross-matching. And then um, I'll check her, uh, the, how many centimeters she is. And uh, I'll check we, uh, she's on CT, uh, if she's on CT, I'll see her fetal heart. If it is a normal um, fetal heart, so I'll uh, prepare for the category a two cesarean section. If it is abnormal, then I'll uh, prepare for a category one cesarean section and uh, alert the theater team. And if she is fully dilated? If it is fully dilated, then uh, if it is, uh, she is imminent labor, so I'll go for instrumental delivery according yes. to her condition. Yes, exactly. So don't, don't forget this point, please. Uh, two comments here. The first comment you said that you will hand over the first case in the midwifer unit to your colleague. You are not in the midwifer unit now. This is the board, this is added board of the midwifer lead unit. So what you need to say in this case, if everything is normal, I will ask the midwife to continue managing the case. If there is any abnormality to inform me, that's all. Because it, it's under midwifery lead care, okay? Yeah. And for the first one, uh, uh, yes, exactly. The most important thing is that call for help, then go through the steps. You have to examine the patient. If you examine it, it's better to keep your fingers elevating the head away from the cord and assess the condition of the cervix and the fetal heart. If the cervix is fully dilated and is favorable for delivery, you can go for instrumental delivery. If it is not favorable or the cervix is not fully dilated, we'll look to the CTG. If the CTG is normal, it will be category two cesarean section. If there is any abnormality in the CTG, it will be category one cesarean section. Okay. Uh, I know uh, 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 this, uh, this uh, board is very, very big one. So many cases are there, but uh, uh, it may appear in the exam. Most probably it will be almost eight cases, total eight cases, but uh, be ready that you may face a situation like this. You are not expected to finish all the cases, but save time, please. Save time. Yeah. What is the risk in each case? And in each case, what you need to say specifically? You need to mention about the CTGs, the Bartogram, the BV examination, and you need to ask about the risk in each case. This is the most important and according to which you will build your plan. And the plan, don't give a straight answer. The answer will be, it depends. It depends on the findings later. You may not examine the patient. And if there is any urgency, you will take your decision now. But if the patient is examined, 
since two hours. So the next examination will be after two hours and according to the examination, if she's progressing well, we'll continue follow up. If she's not progressing, we may do ARM or we may start oxytocin. So always in the structure discussion, either in the labor world or in structure discussion station, don't give a straight answer, say it depends because you will not have a clear situation. Unless he give you something that uh, makes you, uh, you have to take the decision now. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Salma. Anyone is interested? Thank you very much. Yes. You're welcome. I can Anyone go? is interested to? Yes. 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 Hamida. Doctor, can I Doctor go? Hamida. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, induction of labor for a small special age. She's primary gravid, 25 years old. Um, need to know about any risk for the patient or any comorbidities. I need to know about the vital signs and examination. Need to know the um, ultrasound for Doppler and uh, deep vertical bucket. Okay. Need to know if start uh, induction of labor or still. She's waiting to come in. Mm -hmm. Okay. She may be waiting in the reception. She may be waiting mm -hmm. at home. Yes. I need to review her note. To see the doublet, to see the vertical bucket, uh, to see uh, if there is any comorbidities. Okay, no comorbidities and the doubler is normal. Mm -hmm. Need to examine the patient to know Bishop score about the cervical fibrosis surface for induction or no. Okay, so uh, let me tell you something, Doctor. Uh, I'm sorry, Doctor. A name again? Hamida. Dr. Ahmed, so you have now uh, this big labor word board. So when you reach, if you manage to reach to this stage, you can say, I have three patients here waiting for induction. Uh, are, they are waiting to come in. So I will send one of the midwife to apologize for them about the delay and to review their notes. If you have time, you can say the first case, what is the most important thing you need to know about her now? She's not there. She's not in the labor world. So what you need to know about her? The most important is? The uh, vital sign of any, or any complaint that came with the, 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 most any... the most important in case of SGA that will affect your plan of management. The double Doubler, exactly. So uh, in this case, I need to review her notes as a last ultrasound and the doubler because if there is uh, absent or reverse diastolic flow, she may go for cesarean section. Otherwise, she will wait for the induction. The next case, the next case, what uh, is the risk factor in this case and what you need to know about her and which one has a priority in the three cases? To come in first, yes, you have now one empty room and one room for cleaning. So which one you will call first from these cases? Yes, the next case is the uh, reduced fetal movement. She is a uh, para two, 37 weeks. Uh, repeated episode of decreased uh, fetal movement. And there is a history of stillbirth. This is a high risk patient. Need to know also about the last scan and the doubler of her baby and review uh, CTG is done for her. Okay, uh, she's waiting at home. So there also is no need to know about the, the, the cause of the still care. Unexplained. Mm -hmm. So which one has a priority now? Room, uh, the first or the second? The second. The second, yes. yes. So exactly, Th that's how you will say. The first case is induction labor four is more for gestational age. I need to know about the doubler. Because if it is absent or reversed, it will be the priority, right? Cesarean section, yes. It will be, yes, it will be for cesarean and if she will have the priority to be the first one to be admitted. But yes. as the Doppler is normal, the second case has repeated episodes, not only single episode of decreased fetal movement, and she has history of stillbirth. So this case now has the priority to be admitted or to be called in for CTG and for induction, okay? The third case, please. Uh, induction of labor, IV, IVF due to uh, male factor. She is four to week, um, uh, normal entry. Okay. Need to know about um, 
uh, for, for um, any comorbidities need to know about the doubler, need to know about um, TTG done for her. Everything is normal. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, the fetal movement, this is not urgent case. All of them are non-urgent cases. That induction are non-urgent. This is the point. Mm -hmm. This is the point. What uh, I want to tell you, all of you. Mm -hmm. If you didn't put the spot and the W in your mind, you will miss mentioning this point. Did you mention that the first two cases are urgent or non-urgent or semi-urgent? No. You now you just remembered in the last case to mention that it's non-urgent case. Yeah. Okay. So please, please. I told you at the beginning with a pen and paper right beside you, SPAR and then WWW. And once you uh, finish, tick, tick, like this, you will be used to do the right thing and you will not forget the priority. In a case of labor word, the prioritization, and you, mean, you forgot to mention the priority, you will lose a lot in this case. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to some, the, the last three cases are non-urgent cases. I will send one of the midwife to apologize for the delay because our labor ward is busy. Uh, but I need to assess the first case, the Doppler, to see if there is any abnormality. If it is normal, I mean, the second case has a priority to be admitted first, then the case of SGA, then the case of IVF for male factor. Once there is room, I will call uh, one by one, but the first one will be the one with decreased fetal movement. Again, in this station, you are not expected to finish all the cases, but don't waste your time, please. Don't waste your time. How to save your time? Be organized. Okay, this case, for example, the first case, again, she's multivara in early labor at 38 weeks. The background, no medical or surgical history. The assessment, I need to know about the CTG, the BV findings, the partogram, and the risk here, She's high head and unstable life. So I need to know about the estimated fetal weight of the baby, the ultrasound and the amniotic fluid. He will tell you the information, then you will give the plan. The plan, who you will send? You will send one of the midwives. What she will do? She will do BV examination and assess the case and come back to you. When it will be done, this is a semi-urgent case. Why should you know this? You need the ultrasound, why? Because this case is high head. I need also to examine BV to see if there is any kephalopelvic disproportion or no. So now you are justifying your blood. You will take maximum one minute in the second case, maximum one minute in each case. If you passed one minute in any case, apart from room four means you are wasting time. Only, only the urgent case. Only the urgent case. Save the time for the urgent case. Is that clear? Any questions? Excuse me, for the noise, uh, we cannot hear. You told that uh, for urgent case, we'll spend time how many minutes? Uh, um, I didn't mention in the urgent case how many minutes, but don't take more than a minute in any case, except the urgent one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the okay. first case, I managed to finish it in 35 seconds. That's all, that's enough. That's enough. Okay. You mentioned you. all the points. You mentioned all the points needed here. I I know that this is unstable law. You may need to do, you may need to do, you will have to check. She's multivara. So many informations. I know it will be in your mind, but what you need to do in this case, you need to say what's the assessment point you need and who will do this, what will be done, and when it will be done. Okay, this is for all cases please be organized spar and the w's if you didn't uh, if you didn't be organized you will lose the time and you will waste and you will forget to mention some points you will you will forget to mention who will go and when he will go you yes most of you will mention what will be done what is the plan but you will forget to mention who will do it and when it will be done which are two major parts of the question here. Okay. 
There is another board. Are you interested to continue? I still have uh, 30 minutes. Yes. Okay. So I need participant, please. Another one. Who wants to share? Can I try if nobody is? I, I, I need to know someone else, Dr. Salma, because I, I need to know if there is uh, an impact yeah. of the lecture or no. I need to. Yes, to if, if nobody is interested, then I yes, can. Yes, exactly. Okay. By name, Dr. Asma, Dr. Aisha, Dr. Btihag, Dr. Fawziya, Dr. Hamdiya. Okay, there are some people yes. they are in duty, they cannot share. So anyone? Yes, yes, I can do. Your name, please. Hamida. Okay, go on. Read the scenario and tell me what is the situation now. The same as the um, river wall? Yes, this is a labor board. Okay. No, not the same board, but there is another uh, board. Okay. So what is the situation now, Dr. Ahmed? Mm. I, I am on call in the labor uh, board and my consultant it is not in the the, in the in the emergency operation, the other colleague is P2 and P5 and C D and six midwives on duty. And five midwives. Yes, so, so, five midwives with the coordinator. Okay. Ah, okay. okay. So the timing? Yes. Nine, nine a.m. Nine a.m. So now you, you, you know what is the time, who are the team members, and where is your consultant. Based on this, we will start reading the board and take the first two cases, doctor. Okay. And in this case, we'll do it in a different way. Okay? You will tell me what is the situation, what is the background, what is the assessment, and what are your recommendations. We'll go it step by step to be more organized. Okay, start. Start by um, woman or I can... Yes, woman. Sorry, doctor, I'm not hearing. Yes, room one, please. Okay. Uh, room one, there is a... Barra zero, uh, 35 plus two, uh, non case of three clans here with high blood pressure for induction of labor. We need to know more about the patient. So, so now you have uh, mentioned the situation and the background. Now the assessment, what you need to know? I need to know the, um, the other measure of vital sign. I need to know the pulse rate, temperature. I need to know um, abdominal examination. Uh, the, the fetal heart, the CTG, need to know uh, about vaginal examination, uh, how many is the vital um, dilatation, uh, the, the presenting bar, uh, the membrane intact or uh, uh, rupture, there is uh, any bleeding, any tender abdomen, which could know the absorption placenta. What is more important in this case? A case of brief lamps, yeah, there is a risk of uh, uh, intercranial hemorrhage. Okay, so, so, so again, blood pressure, protein, and if there is any, 
and what if there is any symptoms of imminent eclampsia. Besides, yeah. these are the risk. This is at the point of risk. You asked already about the CTG, the BV finding, and the partogram. And now you ask about the risk. What is the risk in this case? This case is a preeclampsia. So you need to ask about if there is any signs of severity or imminent eclampsia. So you will ask about the symptoms, the blood pressure, the protein. Now I'm giving you the answer. Now the blood pressure is 190 over 110. She received one tablet of levitalol three hours ago. The protein is three plus. There are hyperreflexia and beats of clonus. Not yet on CTG. Need to, to start uh, lab with a lot uh, intravena. Need to start uh, magnesium sulfate for the patient, reduce risk of eclampsia as patient in bending eclampsia, severe pre eclampsia. Uh, need to uh, close monitoring or continuous monitoring. I uh, need to fix catheter to monitor uh, urine output and give um, IV fluid in 80 ml per hour. Okay, anything else you want to mention in this case? Uh, this case will be in the high dependence unit. Anything one else? One care. Anything else? Yes, uh, if the patient uh, the control, control will control blood pressure, we continue for induction. If the blood pressure is not controlled, we continue for emergency cesarean section. Also, will involve anesthesia. Dr. Stephai, to come to the patient. Anything else? Okay. So you mentioned blood test to see the liver function. Exactly. So you, you mentioned you managed to mention almost everything, but all was prompting. I'm prompting you to. Um, this will not happen in the exam. This is only for breaths. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned to say the spar, but in the recommendation, I'm pushing you to say who will do this. Mm -hmm. You didn't. You didn't follow that. The five Ws. You forgot again. That's why you mentioned who and where and what. You only managed to say what what will be done. And again, I'm telling you, if you didn't follow the uh, Ws, you will say only what will be done. You will say the plan, but you will not say who will do it and what's the degree of urgency. This is an urgent case, right? Yes, stop urgent. Top urgency. You said it can be managed in the HDU. Perfect. Who will do this? Only the anesthetist? The anesthetist will go and examine here? You mentioned only the anesthesia doctor. Yes, the, ana the anesthesia will go. Yes, you, you or may, may call the senior midwife or the ST2, she, he can go in this case because you may mm -hmm. be busy in another room. But if she's the only urgent case, you will go yourself. So in this case, I need to go with the anesthetist to examine her, to know uh, if there are any contractions, the BV finding. I will start IV line. I will give anti IV antihypertensive, magnesium sulfate. I will start the CTG. Once the patient is established, we will assess her for the mode of delivery. If she can start the induction, or she may need cesarean section. This is all what you need to say in this case. Simply, simply. You will, in this case, it is bite. It is an urgent case, but it may not take more than one minute. So again, if you, you want to say SPAR, S, this is a primary gravid has 35 weeks. Case of preeclampsia in labor. The background here, the blood pressure was 170 over 1.5. So I need to, the, Assessment, I need to know her blood pressure, the protein, if there is any symptoms of severity, and if there is any symptoms of imminent eclampsy. Okay, now he will tell you that this is beside the usual things, the CTG and the partogram. Now he will tell you the findings, 
that the blood pressure now is 110 over, is 190 over 110. So in this case, we need IV, antihypertensive, IV magnesium sulfate investigations. And then when the patient is stabilized, you will go for induction or for cesarean. Who will do this? You will go with the, uh, the, the ST5 anesthesia. You will evaluate the case and according, you will manage. Okay. The next, next room and the uh, same. What is the situation? This is the top urgent. This is the uh, postpartum hemorrhage. I need, I'm not concerned. I need to know first about vital sign of the patient, abdominal examination, their vaginal examination. The patient is um, delivered um, vaginal. You need to know is it tonic uterus or, um, or there is a trauma. Okay, for, the, for the blood pressure is 100. The blood pressure is 100 over 60, and the pulse is 130, and the patient is still bleeding. Yes, this is a shock patient. Call for help. Uh, anesthesia doctor, me, and uh, um, other midwife to, to go to the to the room and we we'll connect to white board cannula, uh, ABCs, airway breathing uh, circulation. We'll give a uh, crystalloid and take a sample of blood uh, um, to, to, to lab to, to, to prepare blood for her and we'll uh, do abdominal examination if that uh, the uterus is a uh, atonic uterus and their vaginal and first we'll do uh, rub the uterus and insert the uh, catheter and I will start by medical management with uh, uh, my team, uh, give intestinal, uh, IV, five units, uh, then uh, ergometrine, uh, after exclude uh, no high blood pressure or patient and not uh, bronchial asthma. Uh, we'll give another uh, 40 units into in 500 uh, for four hours. Uh, if it's still bleeding, we'll give um, carboprost every uh, 15 minutes. And um, if it's still bleeding, we can give a misoprostol. Uh, if it's still bleeding, the patient will um, take to uh, theater after consent if the patient is um, uh, conscious. And, um, and the theater will start by uh, examining the patient under GA. And uh, we'll start by a uh, tamponade and then uh, stepwise uh, b length suture. And uh, the, um, uh, if the, the condition is, it is not a uh, control, it can uh, stepwise uh, blood devascularization. Mm -hmm. The patient is still is, uh, unstable. If there is a facility of intervention radiology, we can do um, uh, uterine after embolization. If no, we'll do a uh, hysterectomy do you think do you think you need to spend five minutes in this case no, it's not, no, it's not, not more a, than two minutes. yes it's not a structured discussion about the postpartum hemorrhage mm -hmm. this is this is a structured discussion about the labor world board so the postpartum here is one case out of eight cases so you cannot spend all the time in uh, discussing the postpartum hemorrhage first of all what i want to say yes you managed to get all the points in this case. You, so if, if they are marking case by case, you will get the full mark in this case, but you lost all the other cases. You said here, you went here systematically, you said the SPAR, and then you said, who will do this? What will be done? When it will be done? Then you said, if you want to go to the theater, but you didn't mention that you will take a panoramic view to ensure 
the safety of other patients before going. Right? Yeah. You have to mention this. And you have to mention about what happened in the previous uh, 15 minutes. Now it's nine and the patient delivered and she's bleeding since 15 minutes. The patient already received the first dose of ergometrine. She received oxytocin, uh, IV fluid resuscitation started. So you need to ask about this. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, that's why that's why you should be aware of the time. Mm -hmm. You received the labor room at nine and the patient delivered at 8.45. So during the past 15 minutes, what happened? She received any treatment, what are the maneuvers? So you will continue the management. You will not go and start mm -hmm. from the beginning. This is a point. Yes. The patient already yes. received ergometrine and sensonone. Now you have to mention the others. Now I will give her hemabit. I can give mesoprostol. I can give tranexamic acid. If the pharmacological agents are not working, I will go for balloon tamponade. If it's not working, this patient has to be uh, examined under anesthesia and for surgical intervention according to her condition. That is all. So the point of 15 minutes, you saved half of the time, but what is already done? Now you will continue the management. Already she received oxytocin and mesergine. Now you will continue. You will give second dose. You will give another doses of hemabate, another doses of carboprost. You can give, you can, uh, sorry, mesoprostol. You can consider tranexamic acid. You can consider tamponade. You can consider surgical management. During the transfer, yes, by manual compression, uh, IV line catheterization already done, and you may consider it, but don't waste all the time in the PPH from the beginning. Already, the patient is bleeding since 15 minutes, and they are dealing with air, so you will come and continue the management. Okay? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Next two cases. Dr. Swarur, please, can you uh, repeat this one that you are presenting, how shortcut you can present this second case, please? So second case, the situation, she's 15 minutes after delivery, She's bar seven and she's bleeding. All blood loss, two liters and is still not controlled. Okay, this is a situation in the background. So the assessment, what you need to ask about this case, you need to about her bleeding now. If it's still, if the bleeding is still going, the vital signs, abdominal and vaginal examination. And you need to ask about the MUSE score. Now he will give you the info and what happened during the past 15 minutes. He will tell you that the uh, pulse is 130, the blood pressure is 100 over 60. The patient is still bleeding and she received already mesergine and she received oxytocin. So I will continue the management of this case. I will ensure that there is IV lines. I will ensure that the fluid management is going. I will ask for blood blood products. I will ask for my consultant and my colleagues for help. Then I will continue management. I can consider giving her uh, him a bit, I can consider giving her mesoprostol and tranexamic acid. If the pharmacological agents are not working, I will take the patient to the theater after ensuring the safety of other patients in the labor ward by taking a panoramic look to the board. Then in the theater, if still the patient is bleeding, we may consider laparotomy and surgical management. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. So please, please think about the case as if you are in the labor ward. Forget the exam now, please, and all of you think. Uh, now I am going to my duty at nine, and I, they told me that there is a case who delivered since 15 minutes, and she's severely bleeding. She's having severe postpartum hemorrhage. So what you are going to do? You will go to the room. You will ask your colleague, how is the situation now? How is the bleeding? How is their vital signs? Okay, what did you give her? Right? I think this is the normal way you would think in, in a case in the real life. Yeah. Then you will start, okay, so we can consider giving her now um, uh, carboprost. We can give did, we can give her mesoprostol. Did you give her tranexamic acid? Is there is a full caster? How much is the amount of urine? Uh, the the cyst, uh, sisters, is the fluid uh, management, is the fluid resuscitation is going? Did you ask for blood? Okay, call my consultant, please. And I need a bakery balloon or rush balloon. Then. Uh, okay, I'm now I'm going to do the theater. I will uh, base if there is any urgent case in the uh, in the labor room, I will call for another help. I will call for consultant. Then I will take the patient to 
the theater. This is the easiest way to pass this station. Think about it as if you are in the labor world. Actually, if you think it as an exam, you would not uh, do well. Whatever your skills, whatever your le level of knowledge, if you will think about this case as an exam station, you will not pass. Think about it as if you are in a real situation in the labor world. Think this way and think this way and evaluate yourself. Think it as an exam case, you will not do well. But if you think it as, as a case in the labor world, I'm sure that you will get all the points. Okay, am I clear? Yes. Okay, next, next two patients, please. Yes, doctor, can I do? Your name, please. Uh, Dr. Mona. Okay, Dr. Mona, go on. Yes, uh, sir, the room, uh, there is one patient, she is uh, given the tuba one for two, two weeks. Uh, she came for IOL and she delivered, uh, yeah, she delivered one hour back and the delivery complicated by third degree perineal perturbation awaiting for suture. Situation now, she is a steam urgent case. Uh, I will go to assess the patient myself to see the situation. Uh, if she is in bleeding, uh, how is her vital? And then uh, meanwhile, I will apologize to her uh, that we have urgent cases and I will keep vaginal packing. And I will apologize to her. Then I, after we finish the urgent cases, uh, we'll, uh, we'll call her for suture uh, under GA. Perfect. Uh, Perfect, Dr. Mona. Perfect. But uh, uh, try to be concise during the situation. You mentioned the situation twice. So again, this okay. is a case, post delivery. Post delivery, bar one, she delivered one hour back and the delivery complicated by uh, third degree perineal tear. That's all. This is a situation and the background. For the assessment, you said the bleeding and the vital signs. Now I will tell you, yes, now I will, now you have to ask me uh, how is the bleeding and how, how is the vital signs. I will answer as the examiner, the patient is not bleeding and she's stable hemodynamically. So, uh, as the patient stable and bleed, no bleeding, I will go inside, apologize to the patient myself. I will keep vaginal packing and I, meanwhile, I will go to finish my urgent cases and I will call here for suture in the center. You will not, go, I will ask about you will not go yourself now? You will uh, not go so yourself now? Now you will not go no, yourself? No, I will send my to uh, or midwife to keep her consent ready and prepare her for suture under the alert to the center. There is another case waiting for suture and uh, do her anesthetic check up, consent, and that's it. Okay, so the first time was better than the second time for, uh, for the management. Yeah, okay. one more, uh, she has to also to receive uh, antibiotic, IV antibiotic, the reoperative. The, the, the details, the, the details, the details. Checklist. Dr. Amuna, this is not a structured discussion about the management of third degree perineal tear. This is a structured discussion about the management of labor room work. So as you said the first time, uh, all what you need to ask about the bleeding and the vital signs. She's not bleeding, vital signs are okay. You will send one of the midwife to apologize for the patient for the delay because we have urgent cases in the labor world. Then I will arrange everything to be sutured under anesthesia in the theater. Finish. Now you mentioned who will go, what will be done, when will be done, when this is urgent or semi or non-urgent. It is semi urgent. Semi urgent case. So everything was fine except that you didn't mention the urgency. Okay. Okay, so Dr. Mona, please remember the W's. What will be done, who will do, and when. When it is very important, this is a priority station. So don't forget the priority, please. Uh, for when, doctor, now I will see when, is because the patient is still in uh, labor room now, but I will see her here in the center. So the, when? When the means, place now, ju just the say, now. This is a semi-urgent. When means is a degree of urgency. This is urgent case or semi-urgent or non-urgent. So when means the urgency. Once you say semi-urgent, that's that's uh, the answer for when. Okay. 
Yes, so please, could, can you answer me for this W question? Can you answer this 3W? When I will see some urgent? Where? Labor room? Where? No, no, in the labor room. Where? In the theater. theater. Uh, you mean where I will see future? Like yes. This, not where the future now. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I, yes, exactly. Okay. What you will do? Who will do? Yes, who will do? Who will do? I will do after I will finish my urgent thesis. Okay, but That's now? Yes, but now, now I will send one of the midwives to apologize for her and to prepare everything. Then the patient will be shifted to the theater. I will repair the third degree my tear, the third degree tear myself or the consultant according. Because if you remember in the lecture, I said third degree perennial tear for the ST5, 6, and 7 and the consultant to be unsupervised. Otherwise, less than this, ST3, 4, can do surgery perineal tear, but under supervision. Okay, now I am ST5, so I yes, will be yes. the one who can suture it. Yes, exactly. But later, now you will send the midwife. Once you are free, you will take the patient to the theater after ensuring the safety of other patients in the uh, labor room, and you will do it in the theater under anesthesia for repair of surgery perineal tear. Okay? The next room, next room. Okay, next room four. Uh, I have brain patient. She is in second stage of labor, 30, second stage with pathological CTG situation. Now she is brain 38 week. CTG is pathological. Uh, I would like to know since how long is she is fully dilated since one hour back. And CTG since how long is pathological? It is three minutes or two minutes that I would like to know. And what is her VE finding? What is the station of the head? So I will make my plan either I will uh, proceed by instrumental delivery or I have to- Ask me, Dr. Amuna, ask yes. me, ask me. Now you mentioned, I mean, I mean, you mentioned the assessment know. points. Yes, just one second, please. You mentioned all the points you need to know. Just ask the examiner, any available data? Yes, he, any available data? He will tell you that will, this patient is, yes, give me a chance to answer. Give me a chance now. You are asking me, so you, you are waiting for answer, right? Right. Okay. Now the patient is fully dilated since one hour. Yes. What is her BV finding right now? Since fully dilated. The head is left to occipital anterior, and she's plus one station. Okay. And the CTG pathological sense how long? The CTG since 30, 30 minutes. Yeah, so this patient, as she is plus one station, I can make my plan for uh, instrumental uh, delivery trial. Otherwise, if filled, I will take care for emergency cesarean section. So what is the urgency? She is urgent case. I will assist by myself, uh, okay. and I will take the patient who under in the theater for instrumental delivery to exhibit the delivery. If filled, I will proceed for scissor. See again, Dr. Amuna, remember the Ws, okay? Yeah. The, 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 again, I, you, uh, I, again? I will assist the patient myself. Yes. She is urgent case. I will go to here by myself to review here and assist here. I will get all data about the BP finding and since how long her CTG pathological as she is plus one station. So there is a chance to apply an instrumental delivery inside the OT. If, if success well, if not success, I will proceed for emergency cesarean. Okay. I will so inform my consultant. She is second stage cesarean. I will alert my consultant. That's all. That, yes, that's all. Okay. So please, again, don't, don't. Uh, ignore the, um, the examiner. You need assessment data and he will give you, he will answer, but you should ask him. Don't take the scenarios, the scenario again, you, uh, or alone yourself. So you need to know the uh, examination, the CTG finding. So you have to ask him till I need to know about the cervical dilatation. Any data, ask him, hey, do you have any data? He will answer. At this point, now you can you have enough information to build up your plan. Okay. Okay, doctor. And okay. also, I think I forget I missed this point. I would like to know ask about did she receive the uh, from um, intrabartum uh, antibiotic prophylaxis for GBS? Exactly. He mentioned exactly yes yes exactly. 
I should not ignore this line. Yes. If she didn't receive. If she didn't receive, uh, I will inform the new, uh, pediatrician, the mother is GBS proplexis and uh, still till now didn't receive. And she delivered. Did, did, will you give her now? Uh, in the theater, I will. I, I don't think it will be of benefit now because you are going to deliver the baby in less than four hours, which is the less time that the baby will take a benefit from the anti uh, intrabortum antibiotic prophylaxis. Okay. Yeah, because I came to the patient for last plus one institution. Yes. 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 Okay. okay. But just so, I want to show the examiner that I know she yes. is GBS prophylaxis and action yes. should be taken earlier than this stage. Yes. Okay. Okay. But be okay. quick, be quick, please. Okay. The next. Thank Next, you. you are welcome. Next. Next two cases. Dr. Asma, Dr. Aisha. Uh, hello, yeah. Hi, this is Dr. Asma, yeah. Yes, Dr. Asma, go on, please. So um, I have the 29 week uh, uh, monocoronic diamagnetic twin pregnancy, uh, two previous sections. Spontaneous labor polyhydrogenase is five centimeters dilated with difficulty of monitoring the fetal heart for her. So this case is uh, uh, semi-urgent. And uh, what I will do, I want, I can send my uh, uh, ST3 to the patient to assess her and to do with size scan uh, to check for the baby heart and then we can discuss with the patient the need to go for uh, cesarean section uh, with, uh, with uh, like, check if she had a steroid or not. Uh, check with the beads for the iskabu if there is beads for the twins or not. And uh, then after that, uh, this is generally the case is semi urgent. She's five centimeters dilated, two previous sections. Uh, but like, uh, the things will be like, she can go for section uh, after the assessment, like five centimeter. If the head is there, is there any uh, rupture of membrane of the breast wing or not? Uh, so this will be the plan for the uh, room uh, five. Okay, you did it well, but you didn't ask the examiner about anything. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. You you managed you managed to do to do everything in the right way, but you didn't ask the examiner. And uh, uh, in spite you will pass in the uh, clinical knowledge, you will fail in the information gathering and communication with colleague. Okay. Okay. So, so you, you okay. have to ask. You 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 mentioned all the points. You mentioned the neonatal unit, which is a very good point because she is twenty nine weeks. You asked, is there is available? Yes, he will tell you, yes, there is available cuts. The CTG, you didn't ask about the CTG. Yeah, they, they, they said difficult to monitoring the fetal heart. Still, still, to still, you have to ask about, okay. about the CTG now, because this is the city mm -hmm. the situation. Now your assessment. Yeah. Can, okay. no. Still, the CTG is not interpretable, and one of the twins cannot be seen. So you did ultrasound. And the ultrasound scan showing that the both fetal hearts are okay, but still you cannot monitor the babies during labor. So what you will do in a previous two, <clears throat> 5 cm, and you cannot monitor the babies. This is, what is the urgency of this case? It is a semi-urgent because the baby hearts are there. What is the category of cesarean them. you will do? Which category of cesarean you will do in this case? She can go for between two and three. Two and three? Depending on her previous two. Is... Previous two, five centimeter dilated, contract, <clears throat> three contractions in 10 minutes. So in that case, it's category two. Category one or category two? Uh, I will go for category two because uh, uh, it can be done within one hour. We are not expecting the limitation. But, uh, you, you didn't you didn't listen to me they, they the last ultrasound they did it was one hour ago and the fetal heart was positive so the ultrasound one hour ago yes so oh. so yeah. she could be category one yes exactly this need, is the point I this need, is the point of timing 
this is a point of timing mm -hmm. when you ask, listen, and interpret the, uh, the findings. So the patient, she's 5 cm. Three contractions in 10 minutes. Previous to cesarean section, you cannot follow the fetal heart. The ultrasound done one hour ago. So it was maybe one hour ago, it was category two cesarean section, but now it is category one cesarean section. Yes. Right? Yeah. So yeah. please ask the examiner and uh, the examiner will give you clues about your next answer. He's not just saying anything. You are not just asking and ignoring uh, his answer. You will take your next oh, answer from his from his information. Answer. Okay? okay, yes, from his answer. Okay, next next case. Uh, ongoing induction for intracranial lift have missed, has had missed pressing for an on, on one course of multiple stores, and this is her first pregnancy. Uh, seven weeks. So I I want to know uh, if she starts having contractions or not, and um, how is she doing regarding no contraction. Uh, no contractions. So I can send one of the midwife to her. Like I want to know one more. Uh, like is she uh, do you for her second dose of midwifery when she had the first dose? She do it for the second or not? And uh, I will send the midwife to her to like uh, to to tell her that about uh, we may need to postpone the things according to the urgency in the labor world. Like we have few cases in the labor world, and I want to make sure that he's comfortable with the midwife and the baby midwife and everything has so been you, done for her from that point. So your answer. So your answers to questions. When it will be done? What is uh, the urgency? Yeah, it is, it is not urgent, it is non-urgent. Uh, it is a, a non-urgent case. So uh, non my, question, case depending. my question now, uh, a non-urgent <laughs> case, is, is she in the same category like a patient who's waiting um, at home for induction? Uh, no, she's not because the induction has been already started. So induction is a risk factor. You cannot, yes. you cannot ignore the induction as a risk factor. So this case is, I have two options now, either semi-urgent or urgent. She's a semi-urgent. Yes. She's not, not, not an urgent. She's not a routine case. This is a semi-urgent. Yeah, she's not, yeah. So this is the first so question. We, the second question, who will go? Uh, Either the midwife or the ST, uh, ST1 can go to the patient and check if she had uh, one more the last dose. And if she's had, you said she doesn't have contractions, so they may assess her and then give what her the next dose if it is yes. yes, this these are the answers. So go systematically, please, after the SPAR. This is a semi-urgent case. I will send one of the midwife to apologize for her and to support her and what will be done, we can offer here a second dose of misoprostol. There are so many things to be done, to be said in this case. Third seven weeks and intrauteral fetal death. This case needs support. This case, you, you should ask about the consent if um, she agreed for post-mortem examination. Hello? Yes, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so I should things. ask about that. Yeah. You, you should not ask it and you should mention it in brief, but don't take any details. All the consents are there. Okay. I apologize for the patient. As she received the uh, one dose of misoprostol, I will consider giving second dose of misoprostol. And that's all in this case. Okay. 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 Next and okay. the last two cases, please. Uh, doctor, screen uh, not up here. The screen is not there? I couldn't, I can see screen. Only uh, camera and the camera closed. No screen. This is uh, uh, for you all? All of you yes, can see the screen? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, sorry. Yes. Yes, now I'm here, doctor. Sorry. Okay. So, um, last two cases, please. 
who will take the last two? Last two cases. Okay, I can. Do I can go. I can go for them. The new one. Who is this? This is Asma. Me okay. also. I can do with no one. Kalas. Okay, one for you and one for Doctor Asma. Okay. So, do you want to go first, or can I go for the first one? Who will take the okay. first one? I will take it. I'll take the first one. Okay. I'll take the first one. So uh, she is gestational diabetes from which woman she had a possible with CTG. Uh, she is bottom one, and she the SP. And uh, she's fully dilated, four centimeter dilated at uh, 6 uh, a.m. in the morning. So uh, I. So I now, now you finish. Now you finish the situation and the background. What's next? The next step will be like. Uh, I can send uh, my ST3 to the lobo to to the room to assess the CTG and to examine the patient and uh, to check her contraction as as well as to consider SPS for her if it is not like significantly basogical need and organ cesarean section. So what you are going to ask me now. I am the examiner. So you have to ask me any, any data, any details. Yeah, I want to know about like uh, her gestational diabetes. Uh, like she's four centimeters dilated. How is her contraction now? And if we can have a look at the CTG, like is it a pathological in view of a, a prolonged bradycardia or pathological of repetitive? Um, Let the cells so to, to decide the next step and so how long, for now, how long it's pathological. Now the trace is pathological, and the, uh, there are three contractions in 10 minutes. The cervix is 9 cm dilated, indirect occipital anterior, and the minus one station. Okay, in, the, in that case, like uh, I know if. Uh, I would assume that ST3 can go for instrument delivery if needed, and he, and he can go for SPS at least to show to see how the thing goes. So if she's nine centimeter now, minus one station, we can go for FPS to check if we can wait uh, on this till she's fully ready to go for instrument delivery, or do we need to go for an area and cesarean section to depend on uh, uh, FPS uh, result. So perfect, Dr. Asma, but again, please ask the examiner. This is a structured okay. discussion. This is not a one-way one way discussion. So ask him, please. Uh, any data? You asked about the CTG, you asked about the BV, you asked about the, uh, the situation. So wait for him to give you the information. Now he, he told you that the patient is 9 cm. So do not say an instrumental delivery from the beginning. Now. Yeah. You, you can send the ST3 to do fetal blood sampling, as you said. And if the fetal blood sampling is normal, you can give her a chance for normal delivery. Is this likely to deliver? But if it is abnormal, you will take the patient to cesarean section. One very important safety point here is to mention that you have to examine the patient again in the theater before the cesarean because by the time she may be fully dilated. And if she's fully dilated, the situation will change from cesarean section to instrumental delivery. Is that clear? Yes, yeah. So yes, any, patient, thank you. any patient who's fully dilated or nearly fully, please, please, if you are taking the patient for cesarean, you have to examine the patient in the theater. If you have second stage cesarean section, please don't forget to mention that you will examine the patient in the theater before starting your cesarean. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank okay. you, appreciate it. Next case, last case, please. Yes, doctor. Uh, room 
much room i can see okay room e amina she is uh, bara one had cesarean uh, cesarean section five hour back and cesarean complicated by three liter blood loss massive bbh uh, now the background i uh, about i would like to know about she is bara one uh, massive blood loss primary bbh during intrapartum uh, situation I would like to know about here uh, mu chart vitals examination general abdominal vaginal examination now is she bleed or bleeding settled fundal heights here vital pulse blood pressure spiratory rate fluid chart I would like to know which medication is given now and if she is on blood going on blood transfusion or no if so I want to know more information about the patient ask me so any information you should yeah, you should you I should uh, direct the question to me okay okay how is your vitals now okay so the pulse is 130 the blood pressure is 90 over 60 the urine as, uh, output is uh, 120 ml since the operation the uterus was attended in the theater uh, she was given ergometrine and since noon now the uterus is contracted and no more bleeding and uh, there is yeah. oxytocin infusion running Okay, and uh, here for the chart, she urine output 120 in five hours. So it seems for me less urine output. And her birth still, she is tachycardia and hypotension. So I will uh, do my plan to review the patient. I will arrange uh, urgent uh, ultrasound, bedside ultrasound to rule out possibility of bleeding inside. Again, uh, I will inform my consultant. I will inform an anesthetist to review the patients. I will add the emergence uh, bill. Yes, it, it, it is urgent case. What 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 is the most important investigation you need to know about it now? Uh, here for uh, hemoglobin after cesarean after she lost mm -hmm. three liter. How much now? Here hemoglobin. Their HB is seven point five. So I will arrange blood transfusion for her if she, no objection from the patient side. Yes, exactly. So here you should ask about the HB. Okay, the HB may give a, an idea why the patient in this station now. There is no bleeding, the uterus is contracted, but the patient is still tachycardic. And there is, here, as you said, you cannot say the urine output is less because you don't know the weight of the patient. Okay, this may be okay for her. So what you are, uh, you are going to say, this is, what is the degree of urgency? If, the, if there is no bleeding now? No bleeding, so we can so, consider semi-urgent case semi -urgent. now. We'll keep who, her in who high limit unit. Who will go to see her? Who will go? Yeah, uh, I will, uh, I, as I will be busy in my urgent cases, I will send uh, my ST uh, to any anyone else you can send for this case? An statist can be yes, exactly. If there is one an statist more I will say. Yes, the, an, an statist will be more logic in this case because he need to do fluid resuscitation. And also you can send one of um, of your uh, senior of your colleagues with him. He will do ultrasound. He will check that there is no active bleeding, and then you can transfuse the patient uh, blood and the blood product as necessary. If the ultrasound is showing anything or the patient is still bleeding, you can take her again for the theater for exploration. Okay? Yes. So, yes. again, my comment, please uh, think uh, about the case as if you are in a real labor room. Uh, don't think about the case as an exam station because you will lose your uh, competency at this point. You will you will not be trusting your answer. So deal with the case as if you are in the labor room. Please, please, please. I'm not saying you have to, but if you cannot organize your answer, follow the SPAR and the W's. And during the writing time, write who will do, what will be done, and when it will be done, at least you have to answer these questions. Okay, any questions? Okay, thank you, Doctor, so much. Welcome. Uh, yes, Doctor Shorir. Yes. Can I ask one question? Yes, sure. Yeah. Uh, as you told that uh, uterus is already contacted and there is a no bleeding, 
so uh, even though the blood pressure is low and hemoglobin is uh, 7.5 so do you think ultrasonography will be helpful because uh, uterus is contacted and no bleeding also it it may be it may be intraperitoneal is there maybe you have to ensure that there is no other bleeding anywhere Okay, the patient is now tachycardic and hypotensive. The HB is explaining, but you have to ensure that there is no other source of bleeding. It may be uh, not vaginal bleeding, but there may be any, uh, any form of trauma inside. Mm -hmm. So okay. if uh, any form of trauma, so that means it is not semi-urgent, it is uh, urgent. And now, 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 this is a semi-urgent case. You will send one to do the ultrasound if you find that there is bleeding. This will be urgent. Uh, again, Doctor. Again, Doctor. Sam, because you asked the same question at the beginning, you will evaluate the situation according to the information you have now. This situation okay. may escalate or it may come down after the maneuvers you will do. You will do ultrasound. You find intraperitoneal hemorrhage. This it will it change the case later from semi-urgent to urgent case. Okay, yeah. but now mm -hmm. this case is semi urgent and most probably it is because of anemia, because of uh, blood loss, and that's why she's uh, having uh, tachycardia and hypotension. You are evaluating mm -hmm. according to the information you have, not the information you will have after the investigation or the maneuvers you will do. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll give blood, then we'll do ultrasonography if there is any yes. bleeding uh, internally, then we may. Arrange for the uh, laparotomy. Oh, for laparotomy or exploration, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Yes, cesarean done five hours back also. And the cesarean done five hours back, yes, exactly. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Yes, so. Doctor, I want to ask if uh, the patient for IOL due to IOFD, she received the mesoprostol uh, 24 hours back. So shall I will repeat after 24 hours another dose? Like Yes, you can, you can. And regarding the information, you can uh, go back and uh, review how many tablets she has to take. This is not the big point of uh, this station. The point here is to organize how to give your answer. Even if you don't know this information, uh, it will give you borderline in the, in the information or the applied clinical knowledge, but you will buzz the station if you will go step by step as we said. Okay. okay, so the communication. Go on. Communication with colleague and such a station of labor room priority, meaning the colleague like anesthetist and the pediatrician or examiner also communication with examiner. Both, by both of them. Both of them. Question. Both of them. When you ask, when you ask the examiner, it is an information gathering and communication with colleague, because the examiner is playing the role of the coordinator, midwife, or the consultant. So when you ask him and ask him for information, this is information gathering and communication with colleague. When you are delegating tasks to your colleagues, this is a communication with colleagues. When you ask about the availability of cuts in the NICU, this is a communication with colleague and safety. Okay? So that's why you have to ensure that you mention all the points according to the SBAR and the Ws, okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Dr. Suru, 